Hi everyone, my name is Jolyn Asterbaum and I'd like to welcome you to Photography 101. Um, first of all, I want everyone to take down my phone number because we are going to need it for an activity um, about halfway through. So please take down my phone number and stay tuned as to why. Um, but first of all, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Joe Lynn. I've been in professional photography for 12 years, um, shooting weddings, kids, families, events, anything, models. Um, and, and then just a few years ago, I was able to do the number one thing on my bucket list, and that was to go photograph these guys in the wild. So this is Katmai National Forest in, in Alaska, and um, this is Brooks Falls. So um, I was able to fly over remote Alaska land. I go to bear school to, you know, know what to do when you encounter a bear, not if, but when. <laughs> and, um, and so I was able to photograph them in the wild and it was the best thing in the world. And I wanted to stay. If they could just ship my kids to me, then I would have stayed. So anyway, um, so that's a little bit about me. So let's get started. Um, so today, basically the main goal for today's lesson is that I want you to go away with some basic knowledge of how to create something really creative, how to, how to create a photograph that looks great. You know, we're all, we all kind of have our phones on us all the time. We pull out our cameras and we just, we, we get the job done. You know, we take a picture of the memory or whatever, but if you're interested in more of like an artistic type, you know, photography skill, that's what you're going to learn today. There's some basic composition, um, and exposure and lighting, you know, elements that we're going to learn about. And then we're also going to learn about the art and skill of telling a story. So basically like photo journalism, you're going to um, learn a little bit of the basics of camera settings. But right now, today, we're going to focus primarily on how to create a great photograph. Uh, first of all, I want you to know that this is a no judgment zone. So when you guys send me your pictures, that's what my phone number is for. Um, then I'm not going to be sitting here judging like, oh gosh, this is not good. So um, just know that we're all just learners here and I'm constantly learning and I've been doing this a really long time. So no judgment here. Um, and I want to touch on what we just, but I just was talking about how we're going to create great photographs. A lot of times you say, oh, I took a great photo. Well, there's ways that you can create something beautiful. Um, and I, you know, when we talk about creating a great photograph, um, you know, people can think of things in terms of rules, but I don't really think of them in rule as rules. I think of them as ingredients. Okay. So we kind of add these little elements to pictures to kind of give us a little bit of extra artistic value. Um, something that's aesthetically pleasing to the eye when you look at a photo you know you've looked at pictures and you're like oh that looks really good and you don't quite maybe you don't quite know why maybe you do maybe you are experienced in this but um so I'm going to give you some ingredients today we're not going to go over all of those but we're going to I'm going to go over some of them um and so I want to show you the first one it's called the rule of thirds now if you've ever looked inside of your camera sometimes you'll see that little grid and you're like what is that for maybe to make my picture straight yeah you can use it for that um, but uh, you can also create this, um, you know, an artistic value to your photograph by just moving this, the subject from the center of the of the frame off to one of the thirds in that little that you see how it's split up into nine pieces. If you just move that subject off to the side a little bit. It just adds something else, you know, when things are off center, it makes people go, oh, you know, it, it does something with our brain. It's aesthetically pleasing to us. And so um, that's one way you can add an artistic element to your photos. Another uh, ingredient is this concept of space or motion. Okay, so here's this mama. I was in Hawaii and oh, just so amazing. They have their babies out there and it was just so beautiful. I just loved it. So here's this mama and you notice that she's going this way. You know, she's going forward. So you want to give some space on this side of the photo to kind of give that feeling of motion. She's headed that way. So um, it would have been, you know, one thing, if we would have just cropped her out like that, just real close, still a cute picture. It's still, you still get the idea. You still get the story. But if you give some space over here, it just kind of gives that feeling of motion. 
Another thing we can add to our pictures is texture. Um, this is my favorite rainbow eucalyptus tree in Hawaii. And um, it's just so thick. I mean, there's so much texture and color. So that's one way that you can add, um, you know, an artistic value to your photos. So let's say that I'm doing like a senior portrait session. I want to look for walls that have like, you know, you know, you know, chunky walls, you know, bricks and, and things that have different texture that always gives a lot of depth to a picture as well. Um, so right here, we also want to think about interesting perspectives. You're in a forest, you're looking around at the, at the trees. Um, and, but let, let's look up, let's see what, what let's look at a, let, let's look at the world in a different way. Um, this was a wedding that I did over here on the right. Um, there was a balcony. I'm like, oh, hey, I'll go take pictures up there. And then we have some other elements too, the symmetry. And if you notice, we have some texture there as well. So um, that just kind of adds a fun element. It's just a different story when you're up, up there. You know, it, it gives a different artistic value. Um, another thing is creative framing. Okay, so this little guy was on a playset at the at the um, at the playground, and how adorable is that? I mean, it just is it's just different, you know. Than him just taking a picture, you know, like oh, this cute little guy. I mean, I knew him, but <laughs> this cute little guy on the playset. <clears throat> no, he's looking through. I'm like, hey, buddy, look through here. So, and then this other one over here on the right. <clears throat> is an old sugar mill that was had broken down and everything. I loved the way that this window just kind of framed that tree. So just think about maybe creative framing, you know, what can you use in your house or outside in nature to kind of frame what you want to frame. Another element is leading lines. Um, we all know that like when a line is straight and it's going further and further, it gets that, it gives that illusion of kind of going together like that creates a really great photograph, right? So we're looking at, you know, and here's, this is my daughter, Josie. And so we're looking at that line, it kind of draws the eyes that way. And um, it just kind of gives like a really great kind of deep, deep connection with the photo, if that makes sense. Um, one of the most important things about photography is um, lighting. Um, and you just want, I mean, it is almost as important. It is as important as composition, um, what we were just doing. So, um, I want to really encourage you not to use your flash. If you can use natural light, um, you will always get a better picture. Um, so you always, you know, like when you're out with your friends and you're like, hey, everybody, let's take a picture and you get your, your camera out and gosh, when there's that splotchy sun on your face, like let's say that you're under a uh, under a tree um, and the sun is coming through the leaves like that, you know, it gives a lot of shadows. You want consistent light. So either get in the full sun or the full shade. Um, so that will give you a better photo. It, you know, and, and this doesn't even have to be like, oh, I have to really think about how artistic I'm being. No, it's just once you start understanding these ingredients, and start looking for them, then they start becoming more second nature. Um, so just really, really um, look for consistent lighting when you're taking pictures, even with your friends, even if you're not going all artistic. Um, and then look for how creative ways that, that the light is coming through. I mean, right in this one, um, the sun was coming through. I'm like, Ellie, go over there and stand in front of that. So it looks like she's being abducted, <laughs> abducted by aliens. But anyway, so it's a lot of fun. So um, so there's lots of things that you can do with lighting. Um, so I want you to really, really focus in on this one because this is my favorite aspect of photography and it's the whole storytelling. Um, um, if you've probably heard photojournalism, documentary photography, lifestyle photography, you've heard it all. Um, that is just a way to tell a story with a photograph. This is when photography can become an incredible tool for change um, photography can be an incredible tool for awareness, um, things that we don't know about on other in other parts of the world. If it wasn't for photography, we wouldn't know about those things. And so photography can really, really be an incredible tool to help, you know, the, our, you know, help humankind. Okay. Now this is just another little fun. This is just a fun story right here. This is my son's gymnastics team. They were, he was in competitive gymnastics and all of us parents knew like, okay, all the scores are adding up. They're going to be in, they're in first place. 
but I was waiting for that picture of when, for when they announced it, you know, and look at their little bodies are just jumping off the ground. They're so excited. This story, you know, if you look deeply into this picture, everything kind of tells us how tells more of the story. You see the boys jumping, you see the other little guys, you know, over there that are up on the, um, I'm pointing with my finger like you guys can see that um, right here. Um, you know, they're kind of surprised and and some of them are excited and and this guy's kind of bored. You know? So, you know, so you can tell a lot um, about what you want to tell them with just, uh, you know, one picture. OK, so you really want to frame that in a way that tells the whole story. All right, so it's time for a little photo shoot. Um, I want you guys to stop the video for now and take three photos of any of the ingredients that we've learned so far. And I want you to text them to me at, with your name and the ingredient you chose. Um, the next few slides are just an introduction to camera settings that, it, like I said, we weren't going to focus on that today, um, but it is important to get to know your camera. I know that we all have our little phones, you know, our phone cameras and things like that, but um, it is important to get to know those settings in case you want to, you know, use that, that digital SLR. So um, we have shutter speed. That is basically how long the camera is open and allowing in light. It's kind of like if you're in a dark room and you open the door really fast and really, you know, and close it really fast, that's kind of like the shutter speed. The aperture, it, otherwise known as the f-stop, it determines how old, how big the opening is. It's kind of like a pupil and an eye. So you probably have seen these numbers, 2.4, you know, four, you know, seven point, you know, you've seen those numbers on your thing. And um, basically what that kind of, if you have a high aperture, which is the lower number, okay, 2.4 is a really high aperture, you're going to get this blurry background, okay? So the higher the aperture, the blurrier the background. So when you, and that's called depth of field, you know, so that, that distance like that. Um, and then if you were going to do like a landscape picture, you would want to go with a lower aperture, which is a higher number. But more on that, and another time. Um, so we are out of time. And if at any time you have any questions at all, go ahead and give me a text. I don't care. I'm always happy to, to answer your questions and you can throw pictures at me and I will help you out in any way that I can. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great week and practice every day. Okay. That's your assignment for this week <laughs> is to um, think about those ingredients and um, and, you know, and start to incorporate them into the pictures that you're taking. It'll become second nature pretty soon. All right. Have a great day. Bye-bye.